So you guys are, 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 are Generation Z's, right? Am I right? Yes. And so the Generation Z's, they seem to be lost and lonely and have no sense and crazy <laughs> and... Yeah. What happened to the Generation Z's? <laughs> I mean, the basic answer could be sin, but I mean, reality is that it's just the the world that we live in. It's it's the culture that's driven things to just be influenced by whatever's on social media, whatever's yeah. on YouTube, whatever's on TikTok, and we're just trying to be the light. You know, before every podcast, we just pray that one person's affected out of the ninety nine. As long as long as one person's affected, then you know, mm -hmm. God is moving in their lives, and that's what really matters. So. Were you raised by your father and mother? Me? No, I was raised by my mother. And where was your father, if you can say? Uh, I, our relationship, it wasn't, you know, I talked to him a couple times out of the month. Um, but my mother ended up passing when I was 18. And then ever since then, my father, our relationship has been pretty strong. So you're talked close to him, him now? What was that? You're close to him now? Yeah, we speak often now. Oh, nice, man. And so did you forgive him for not being there? Yes, sir. Right on. And did you forgive have... Go I... ahead. I didn't have any hatred towards him. Right on. And did you forgive your mother for recreating you and her image? <laughs> what do you mean by that? You know, that anger that you have and the limiting your imagination and all that, um, that come from your mother. Did you forgive her for doing that to you? I didn't really have, I didn't have anything towards my mother. I was just blessed that she was strong enough to raise me and my other siblings for who we are today. So I'm more, if anything, I'm grateful. Yeah. So you had no anger toward her at all? No, well, there was nothing to be angry at. Just gratitude. Right. So you had none toward your mother, though? Say that one more time. You had no anger toward your mother at all? No, because when I now that I'm 25, I grow up and I realize like how hard life is, and to do that as a single mother raising three kids, that's not easy at all. Yeah. So I applaud her and I thank her, even though she's not here this day. So I can like one or more see her in her eye and thank her. I'm right. truly grateful that a woman, not a man, but a woman, can stay that strong, work, pick up two to three of her kids from school every day and do that every day, five days out of the week and work and still provide for your kids. Right. Never tell them to put them in sports and raise them as if money wasn't an issue when it could have been. I'm grateful. Nice. And Abigail, did you forgive your mother for recreating you and her image? I'm kind of in the same boat as him because she was my, obviously a single mom as well. And she went to college and got her master's in the midst of raising three kids. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm and financially, sorry to hear that. she um, obviously went through a lot of battles, but she continued to put that continually strong face on, and she did a really good job at it. I mean, I have two other siblings as well, so she raised three of us, and we're all close in age, all did sports. All graduated. All graduated, and the best part about it is, like, my grandparents, her parents were very involved, so that helped a lot as right. well. They so I don't feel like I lacked, like, even though my dad wasn't there, I think it was more of a forgiving my dad thing, not my mom. Cause my dad was the one that obviously those voids started opening and I have forgiven my dad and we have a very good relationship now as well. So nice. but have you, forg that, have you forgiven your mother for those little things that would irritate you while growing up? You know, if you oh, control yeah, yeah, I mean, and all, did you apologize to her for resenting her for being so yeah. controlling? Yeah, I mean, I think um, we've had a conversation before, like when my parents um, got divorced, I, I was upset at my mom, but it's because my dad had skewed it to be my mom's fault. And so I've apologized for those things. And we're in a really good relationship now, healthy communication and everything. And I now see things from her perspective. Like you said, when you're older, your eyes just kind of open yeah. to a lot of different things that you don't know when you're young. You don't comprehend when you're younger. So right. then you're able to be like, wow, that was the reality you were living in. And that was everything that you went through to just provide for us and be there for us as well. You, um, so you forgave her for running your dad off, for running him off? I understand now. So I definitely forgive her because I understand why that took place. Right. Um, and when you understand and you get the backstory and you see the reasoning and it aligns with the Bible, you're like, 
okay, this makes sense. And because when you're young too, they can't explain everything that happened because you're too young to understand right. and to comprehend it. Because I was in um, fifth grade when my parents officially got divorced. And like, you're still young, you're still developing. If she tells me everything that's going on with my dad, it's just, it's not gonna digest well for a person that is that young. You're not gonna be able to comprehend right, of those course. things. And you went and forgave your father for not being there for you to protect you from her? Yeah, I I forgave him because he also was very, he's sick. So he has bipolar disorder. So it's like very, very high highs and very low lows. Right. And with that and understanding that as I got older and I see the illness, the mental illness in his life, you can see why the actions he took were the actions he took because he's operating from a place of mental disability versus like doing it purposely like i fully believe my dad has loved me the best he possibly can absolutely it's just it's that mental illness that blocks things sometimes and they act a certain way amazing and so you guys are christian do you have perfect peace perfect peace yeah do you do you guys have perfect peace because you're christian right am i right about that i'm not sure yeah, 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 we're Christians. And so do you have perfect peace? I have a peaceful mindset knowing that I, I know where I'm going after this. Like, I know my Lord and Savior, so yes. I don't think that I will have perfect peace until I'm in heaven. Because the reality is we live in a sinful universe. So when we live in a sinful place, it's hard to have perfect peace because we're still, we're still battling that flesh every day. And we're still battling the enemy every day. So to have perfect peace, like... The Lord is perfect peace. He's the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And so continually reminding ourselves of his word and going back to his word. And whenever we get anxious, we can go back to perfect peace, which is the word of God, and continually to read but, that. But Christ said he came that you might have perfect peace and have it now. Why mm -hmm. can't why won't you have it now instead of waiting until you get to heaven? Well, I think that I can't have it now. It is attainable now, but it's like, I guess the way I would explain it is I battle with some things today because we live in earth, right? And what's on heaven, we can also have on earth, like we were talking about in Matthew yesterday. But basically, I feel like I have perfect peace when I'm sitting with the Lord and I'm in my word and I'm sitting in his presence. Like, that's perfect peace. But when I'm just like going about my day sometimes and I get in my flesh or I get in my head or I get you know, the enemy's tactics or whatever. It just, it's never always a hundred percent. And I believe it can be a hundred percent. It's just a journey, you know, to right. get it there. It's and not why always... don't you stay out of your head? Since all thoughts are all lies all the time, why do you worship thoughts? Well, I think that that's a simple flesh mindset. And like it says in the Bible, something about thoughts. We've watched a podcast on it. I forget what it's called. But um, renewing our mind, or... renewing your thoughts. But I feel like That's we're Romans constantly 12. Romans twelve. We're constantly rewiring our brains when you come into a relationship with Christ. Like you're rewiring things, getting rid of the old, and the new is coming. So I think that my thoughts, like since I came to know Jesus, has definitely came a long way. But I'm not going to sit here and say it's a hundred percent. I'm not going to say I don't think negatively here and there because that would be lying. And I know, though, that the Lord's word stands true. So if I have a thought come in my mind, like how the Bible says to take it captive, like I'm going to do whatever I can to take it captive. Like, Lord, refresh my mind. And then what I'll do is I'll search scripture and I'll replace that lie or that thought with the word of God, like learning how to combat that, if that makes sense. Let me ask your husband, do you create your own thoughts? Do I create my own thoughts? Do you create your own thoughts? What do you mean by that? Do you create your thoughts? Um, I mean, I think we're human, so we all have our own thoughts that come to mind. Um, you have thoughts that are godly thoughts, and you have thoughts that are worldly thoughts. That are what? Worldly thoughts, like thoughts oh, of this world. And so do you yeah. create those thoughts? I don't, you know, I don't create them, but they might come, come about. <laughs> <laughs> and where do they come from if you don't create them? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just, I think us as humans, we have the brains or sometimes certain people have the minds where they just wander off and then a loophole gets to another loophole and then a rabbit hole gets to another rabbit hole. And so where do thoughts come from if you don't create them? Where are they? Where do they come from? 
Have you ever wondered that? All these thoughts, where are they coming from? Or did you think that you created them? That's a good question. I'm not sure. How about you, Abigail? Do you create your own thoughts? I think that thoughts oftentimes stem from a root of something, obviously. Like if I think of the Lord or I think of his goodness, usually it's because the root is that I was in my word in the morning, you know, so then that thought came to my mind. Or if I think of negative things or I think of things in my past, it's because there's probably a root to it that I haven't healed from. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so do you create them? In a way, yeah. And how way, do the, you create a thought? In a way, I feel like roots in our lives create those thoughts, like things that happen to us, things that we do, and how we spend our time create those things. And so who are you, Abigail? I'm a child of God. <laughs> I think that uh, the biggest thing I put my identity in is being a daughter of Christ. And that's what I try and stick to every day. When I'm doubting, when I'm going about my day, I just always try to do whatever I can to remember that I'm a child of God and how he calls us his children. And we've been adopted into his family and stick to that. Like we even, every time we talk to our dog, we say child of God, even though he's just a dog, it's just what we call him. But <laughs> And so you told me you belong to God. You told me what you do, but who are you? Um, I don't know how to explain that. I mean... She's a, a wife to her husband. <laughs> All right. So she's a wife. But who is, uh, who are you? Just Jacob. What? <laughs> well, I'll go G. Kobe. I'm going to remember before this is over. G. Kobe. <laughs> G. Kobe, who uh, are you? Uh, I'm Jacoby. I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. I'm the husband to my wife, Abigail. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm blessed. I'm just thankful. Thankful that I'm here. Um, today, the Lord has been showing me like people from my present life and people from my past life. And I've been able to see just through my old friend groups and who I'm friends with today of who I am, like who God is, where God has taken me and how far I've come. Um, so I'm a grateful <laughs> child of God. <laughs> okay. So you told me who you belong to, the friends you have, what you do and, and all that. But who are you? Not what you do, who you belong to, but who are you? How would you describe who are you? Right, who are you? Not what you do or who you belong to, but who are you? Well, I want to know the answer that you're looking for. I'm, What's the I'm just trying to find out who are you. Not what you do or who you belong to, but who are you? I'm Jacoby. That's your name. That's, that's who I am. So are you your name? I'm me. Are you your name? What was that? Are you your name? I'm Jacoby. But are you your name? I'm a I'm a man. I'm a black <laughs> black <laughs> African. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Abigail, so you don't know who you are either? You just know what you do? No, I I feel that. I know who I am because I know who God is and that's why I put my identity in and whether it's correlating to it or who I belong to or this, but I feel like my identity is fully found in that. And because of that, I know like I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that I was created in his image. I know that I have these things in my life because of who he has made me to be and called me to be. Like I know I'm a compassionate person. I know that I'm kind. I know that I we usually go out of my way to help other people and to lead other people. And that's, like I said, that all stems from knowing in Christ who I am. Like I used to think that I was like before I knew Jesus, like you said, a lot of Gen Zers think this way. This was me before I knew Christ, but it's like, I used to think I was rejected. I used to think that I wasn't enough. I used to think that I wasn't loved, but now I know that script has flipped since I've came into relationship with Christ. Like I know I am loved. I know I am chosen. I know I am set apart. I know those things. And that's why I put my identity in. What do you, what do you guys want young people to learn or all people really, but what do you want young people to learn from your podcast? The biggest thing is relationship with God. Cause I think that a lot of people our age 
the reason why they push off church, they push off religion is because of legalism and religion. And if we get past that into a place of relationship, like you can have a relationship with him yourself. You can pray to him. You can read the word. You can grow in an intimacy with him. Then your life will change. And I think that a lot of times people think you have to live up to the standard, but it's not it's not like you're supposed to fulfill that standard. And through Jesus, when you have that relationship with him, that's when the desires of your heart start to change. It's not like I'm going to live up and be a good person and go to heaven. That's not how I see it. I see people need to have a relationship with him. And that's the biggest thing we talk about when we meet with people, when we pour into people is like, I want you to know that Jesus loves you and that he wants a relationship with you. He doesn't want you to be perfect. He doesn't want you to do everything right. And he knows you're going to sin. He wants to love you and he wants to work with you to continue to grow closer to him. And as you grow closer to him, the desires of your heart will start to change. What does your, what, what do your friends think about the way you think and what you believe? What do they think about you guys? Do they like you or do they argue with you? What do they think about you guys? You're so young. Yeah, we have a lot of friends that are thankfully equally yoked with us. So they're on the same level headed, like where we're at and agree with what we agree with and believe what we believe. And then we have some friends that aren't there yet and don't don't agree with us. And for me, it's like, I'm not going to sit here and fight with you. I'm going to love you where you're at. And just because you voted for someone I didn't vote for doesn't mean we can't have a relationship. And... That's pretty much any of our friends. That's how it is. It's like, even if we don't agree on something, we're not going to let that ruin a friendship. Right on. Like, no reason. That's amazing. Mm -hmm.